Hi, I'm Jenny and welcome back to my allotment garden. Um, it's been ages since I last shot a video here, probably I think about 10 weeks. Um, and in that time, so much has changed. I think sometimes when we're gardening, like it sort of feels like you're sort of slogging along, you don't see anything. It's one of the reasons that I really love to film my allotment because the difference between 10 weeks ago and today is just absolutely wonderful. It's been really busy, loads has changed and I'd love for you to see it. So let's go. Here at the top of the plot, the things that are mostly in bloom has definitely been the weeds. Um, so my sorrel's gone to seed. Um, the thyme is just going to the end of flowering. There is some couple of sugar snap peas in the front here. Um, they are a yellow variety. I don't remember the name of them. I grew them a couple of years ago and just found only a few seeds left. So I thought that I would um, plant them up and hopefully save some more seed this year. These two um, are the pallet collar beds. As you can see, are mostly just full of grass and mare's tail. Um, I did try to grow carrots in this one and there are a couple of carrots in there but the weed pressure's just been way too much so I kind of need to figure out what I'm going to do about that. This is the raspberry bed that's on the other side. Um, it's come back really really well. Um, I did transplant a couple of new plants in here this year because I lost a few. And I've also tried to plant a few um, plants in between. So I've got some calendula there. I've got a couple of um, nasturtium down here as well. Um, you can see them like a slightly different colour in the middle there. So I've got a couple of those too. And I'm trying to sort of create a bit of ground cover underneath so that I don't have to weed quite as much. And I've also got a some poppies. They just come up all over the place and a sunflower somewhere, which hopefully will do fine because it's self-seeded. And this bed in the front had um, purple splashing broccoli in it. I've cleared that and it's got now two cucumbers and one small squash. I think that one's you cheeky curry. Um, it's a squash I really like, but I didn't get very good germination this year, so I only have one, so I'm hoping for the best. And on the opposite side, I've built yet another little tripod here, and this one's got two baby boo squash on, which are little white pumpkins. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to those. So when they get moving, that'll be good. Over here, I've got three different types of bean plants. Um, the ones nearest to the camera those are um czar runner beans um they've probably been in the longest but they've sort of taken quite a while to get moving um and i, I did have quite a bit of a struggle with germination so i've ended up with sort of like two sets but we'll see how that goes at the back i've got um a french bean french climbing bean called blue lake um they actually did really really well so that's good and at either end i've got a couple which are called coco bianco um the that's these here i don't know if you can see on the camera but they've got really weirdly shaped leaves they're like their first leaves that came up with like really bizarre shapes i wasn't really sure if that was good or bad but i just figured i popped them in i did wonder if it wasn't maybe the a problem with the compost because i did use a different compost for these but i just figured i'd leave it in and you know we'll just see how it goes so here I've got some um, callaloo, which is an aromanth plant, um, grows massive green leaves that you use quite a lot in Caribbean cooking, as well as some Swiss chard along the back. I've only got four Swiss chard plants because they just get so massive, I don't really need loads. Um, but I'm really looking forward to the callaloo, so I'm hoping it will take well and that this sudden, sort of um, hot weather that we're having at the minute will be really really good for it and hopefully I will get lots and lots of leaves. I am really happy with what I've been able to get done over the last couple of weeks but to be honest it has definitely been hard going. I think um, one of the things that I'm, people always say when you do no, a no dig garden is that you know you get less weed pressure and therefore it's much easier to do and I think to some extent that's true. I definitely have less annual weeds coming up but 
the weed pressure from cooch grass, bindweed and horsetail, that, yeah, no dig, it makes, as far as I can tell, barely any difference to that. Well, the cooch grass has got a little bit better actually this year and the bindweed has been super, super easy to pull out. But the horsetail that grows on this site is just prolific. And so that, I feel like most of my time has just been spent sort of just weeding, basically. Weeding, 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 weeding. And every time you do a little bit, you come back, you know, three days later and they're like back up again. So it has been quite hard going and it's definitely taken me longer than when I was on my previous plot, which had barely, that had barely any horsetail at all. Um, so I think I haven't really realised when I took this on just how difficult that would be to manage. Um, I mean, it's not all bad and I think I found a pretty good way of sort of like managing it most of the time. I mean, the heavy mulching is definitely helping. All of my paths are mulched first with cardboard and then with wood chip and that makes a massive difference. And um, partly because they're just easier to take out. Um, and I think it just sort of, it probably just slow it down a little bit in comparison with plots that don't have any mulch at all. Like it's definitely slower, but it's just hard going. Um, and the same is probably true with the cooch grass. That is slowly getting better, but because I have a grass path on one side, um, I definitely have that problem of grasses that encroach in, but I kind of feel like that's probably, you know, everybody on an allotment with grass paths probably has that same issue. Um, so I'm just trying to keep on top of it and thinking about a couple of different things that I might be able to do to sort of help manage that a bit better. Like I'm probably gonna put um, like a wooden board at the side next to the path um to sort of slow the encroachment of the grasses a bit so i'm probably going to do that over the winter this year other than that i'm just trying to keep on top of it and hoping that eventually the weeds will get weakened but that being said there is still a lot growing um and i'm going to show you this next little bit of the garden now so this bed has um some multi sown beetroot and um spring onions most of the beetroot is doing okay a couple of them are still pretty small um but i'm hoping that they will catch up i think they're all the um i think it's the the yellow ones i've got golden beetroot in here those ones for some reason like they're at this front end are a bit smaller than the rest um and the rest of them are mostly a mix of varying varieties i think i've got some chiaga in here and some detroit um as you can see <laughs> the pigeons have been having a lovely time eating the baby leaves but um i don't really have netting this size so i'm just kind of yeah i'm just like i'm just rolling with it hoping that it'll sort itself out <laughs> we'll see um i've got quite a lot of lettuce over here i've just given away loads to some other people at the allotment because i just had so much of it and i did have in here um pea shoots which didn't do that well to be honest um and i'm not really sure why but yeah they, they didn't do that well um they kept getting eaten by something else so that didn't work out very well and i had a few radishes as well radishes were fine they've just come out and i will probably put some more in here um and maybe some rocket as well but i used one of those sort of um mi um salad mix one um seed bags to do this which is great because it's a really easy way of getting loads of different varieties although i do have quite a lot of lola rosso but um yeah that's been really good so i've really enjoyed that this bed over here is still empty um it's waiting for tomatoes which are not quite ready to come out yet but we'll probably put those out in the next week um and these are some peas i'm gonna say that they're probably kelvedon wonder but that may or may not be true. <laughs> um, and to be honest, these peas are a bit like the pea shoots that I did. They just seem to really struggle to get going. Um, I don't know if it's maybe just not enough water. It's been so dry the last two weeks that it might just be that, you know, maybe just not quite enough water, but they've just struggled to get going. Um, and something keeps sitting here. I think it's one of the cats actually keeps sitting on them. There's a little courgette that I've chucked in at the end. That's just all green bush. So, um, it doesn't have the earliest um, sort of, um, it doesn't flower that early, but um, it'll grow much, much bigger than this. But it's really prolific. Um, and I don't find that I tend to need a lot of courgettes, just, you know, a couple here and there to keep it going. Um, oh, yeah. So in here are the, hmm, there's broccoli at this end and there is a purple cauliflower at that end. So these are the ones that I grew um 
from seed in the little seed bed at the top which is now covered in grass um, and I just took them out of there and put them in here because they were just getting smothered by grass and the horsetail so I just thought you know what let's just pop them in here and we'll see if they do all right and they're all right they've come on quite well actually now that I've moved them um, so yeah quite happy with those keeping them covered trying to avoid the um, cabbage moth laying eggs on them and the um, pigeons from eating them and then right over here we have a beautiful set of um, broad beans some of which have now fallen over I might pop some stakes around the edge and a bit of string just to keep them up to be honest um, but yeah these are doing fine um, they're just starting to set um, pods now oh yeah there's a really big one right there actually in the middle I don't know if you can see that beautiful pod um, so yeah they're starting to set pods which is great um, and soon I will be eating those and I'll be very happy I tend to pick my broad beans quite early actually because I like them when they're really really tender and sweet <laughs> this is one of the beds that's sort of been left to fend for itself I haven't exactly figured out what I'm gonna do with it there's a couple of shallots in at this end and obviously some weeds to go with them um, I'm trying to figure out what to put in here. I'm thinking I might put some kales in, but if I do that, I think I need to get some much finer netting so that I can avoid the white fly, which has been, you know, yeah, I just had loads of it on my kale last time. So I'd really like to avoid that if possible. So I think it means I need to get some netting. Um, and over here um, is a collection of things I did not plant. So this is winter purslane, which is just going to seed now. And it just self-seeded, um, along with some potatoes, it would seem. Look, I will pull those out. <laughs> this is a really fabulous um, plant, to be honest. I have three of them. There's two more at the back over there. But it's an amazing plant. Um, it, grow, it grows during the hungry gap. So basically, it's ready to eat like March to May. Um, it's got really sort of like succulent leaves beautiful and salads just and super easy to grow so I'm gonna try and collect seeds I'll probably pull out two of these but I will leave one and see if I can collect some seeds from it this year although I suspect it'll probably just self seed in the same place next year anyway there are also a little bundle of leeks right there in the middle um, which one of my allotment neighbors gave me and I'm yet to put out they're gonna go in this bed um, once I've cleared of the other things that are in it um, and yet again more puppies because we just have loads of those this part of the plot behind me has definitely been the bit that's been hardest to get on top of since i took the plot over last year but i am trying to get it to a place where i can plant m many more perennial um, vegetables well, and herbs in it as well so because it's an area that has some really really pernicious weeds in it i've got bindweed um, ground elder, um, the horsetail, and um, oh, and and couch grass. They all grow in this bit over here. I've had it covered for um, I want to say maybe eight months or so. Might have been it might be a bit longer than that. The other side actually, been, one side's been covered for almost a year, um, and one side's been covered for about eight months. Um, and you know, out of the edges of like the black plastic, those weeds just keep sort of like pushing their way out. So what I'm trying to do is to create a scenario where it'll be really heavily mulched with wood chip. And so because of that, I'm gonna try and keep mostly perennials um, at this end of the bed um, so that it's, yeah, because perennial plants really enjoy that so I'm probably going to give over quite a bit of it to some fruit I'm putting some herbs in it as well and I've got my trees there um, and I'm hoping that eventually I'll be able to keep on top of the weed pressure and so it actually makes it just a much more fun place to actually be and like more enjoyable to spend time at the allotment if you're not just weeding every day but also that I'm able to grow some of the things that I really really enjoy so let's go and have a look so this is my strawberry bed um it definitely needs covering because so far we've had zero strawberries because they keep getting eaten by um other critters <laughs> so i need to do that um i've also got some garlic in here which is not doing great i put it in really late to be honest so you know you've just kind of got to live with that haven't you um but i have got these very very beautiful purple poppies which i am loving there are bees on them basically all of the time particularly when you come up in the morning um 
they're like a little feast of bees eating like there are today in fact very happy over here so they're gorgeous um so i am going to cover the, the strawberries but i will just sort of we'll probably have a few sacrificial strawberries left out of the netting so that i can keep the poppies but that's fine um my sweet corn um i put in a couple of weeks ago and actually it's doing okay um i had sort of spotty germination with this as well but that's not really you know the end of the world i did so, so some of them are bigger than others just because they were planted at different times um only by about two weeks to be honest so i don't think it'll make a huge difference but um yeah we've got a bit of sweet corn in um and two rhubarb plants one of which is not very happy and one which is fine um this one in front of me is one that i found on this plot buried in a pile of rubbish um, and i've replanted it here um, it just doesn't seem to do very well um, i don't really know why yeah it's just not very happy um, it might just be a different variety it did start it did sort of um regrow quite early in the season so it could just be that it's quite an early variety and it just yeah you know it's just done um this is the one that i brought from um an old plot that i had so this is yeah i've had it for quite a couple i've had it for quite a few years and it's been fine i haven't harvested any rhubarb at all this year because i'd only put them in this position this year so or maybe last year end of last year so i didn't want to move them or take anything from them so i've just left them hopefully they'll put their um, energy back into the crowns and keep growing i have um, a couple of tubs of potatoes over here um, i've stopped growing potatoes in the ground because i just get so sick of all the volunteer potatoes that you get in the following years it's just really 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 annoying so yeah i'm just not doing that anymore um and i think i've got three tubs of charlotte and three tubs of pink fir apple they're doing fine so yeah they probably do need topping up with a bit more compost but other than that they're okay here is my little pear tree um so far so good my only sort of downside is that all of its branches seem to be growing in, on only one side which i really needed to resolve that um <laughs> so i'm not sure how but um there's a couple at the bottom i think we're gonna have to keep and try and coax them out the other side but i'm sure that it will grow eventually i just need to give it a minute um comfrey is looking lovely um and the bees have been very busy this white comfrey flowers first so it's flowered it flowered a little bit before i put it in it's quite a lot smaller as well but um it's fine it you know it's comfrey it'll perk back up when it's ready it has actually got a new i think i might cut it back actually though and just wait for a new set of flowers the purple one is doing fine but again it's coming to the end of its season so i will cut that back quite soon it's currently still got flowers though and and bees um and here is the little apple tree which actually does have a couple of baby apples on it i'm gonna show you you see these so there we go a couple of baby apples on it i have had quite a bit of an issue with aphids on this um so i'm just having to keep coming back i'm just spraying with like water and um washing up liquid which you know just it, it gets rid of them i'm just having to come back and keep doing it really but i'm very very happy with that i don't think those apples will be edible but you know that's okay down here i've got my gooseberry bushes um i actually found an extra one um a week or two ago um so that's at the far end over there it's much smaller none of these have flowered um so i haven't had it uh so they haven't set any fruit either i don't know if they're just maybe young because they were just here tiny little sticks when i um moved to the plot so i've literally no idea about how old they are um so i'm just going to leave them in their pots for another year and we'll see how we get on with that so this is at the jungle end of my plot there are two rows of raspberries here um and as you can see it's very very weedy um, <laughs> um so um, this is an area that i'm currently working on just um trying to pull up as many of the weeds as i can clear some space around these raspberries and then i will fill the space between them um, and around them with wood chip to try and suppress some of the weeds um, and I guess kind of give me a better chance of keeping on top of it really it's less for the raspberries than it is for me to be honest I don't think they really care about the weeds they're growing fine regardless but obviously it looks quite messy and if you're on an allotment quite frequently they're not really that keen on mess so I'm trying to sort of 
and keep on top of that a little bit. I've cleared a little area in front of um, the raspberries. So there's marjoram here, there's some savoury, there's quite a lot of calendula and a little bit of nasturtium at the top. Um, and this little strip here between where the trees end and the raspberries start, I think I am going to fill with some more herbs really. Um, fill it with herbs, they're also quite happy to be surrounded by wood chip. Um, and just sort of try and keep this end a sort of mini herb garden and some raspberries. So yeah, I think it should be quite good when we're done. So there we are, that is the plot um, in June. I hope you've really enjoyed it. I think I really love seeing how different it is to like the months before and how it grows and changes over time. Um, I'm still really trying to focus on having fun while I'm here and like not just spending all of my time like just you know feeling like you've got jobs that need to be done there are jobs that need to be done but gardening is also meant to be quite good for your mental health isn't it and like um and i enjoy just being in the space so i am trying to give myself enough time not just to get stuff done but also to relax to watch the bees lazily buzzing about just to be in the space um which i think is quite hard to do sometimes if you've got this like long list of jobs that you want to get done um and i think i'm a little bit like that when there's this long list i can be like oh no just like get them all done but it's equally important just to have that time and relax and enjoy you know the little piece of land that i have and I am really enjoying it. I've got a couple more things that I'm still growing that I want to put in. But I think what I'm really excited about is just how full the beds are actually and how, you know, in comparison to this time last year, it's entirely different. Um, and it feels much more like a space that's mine rather than something that somebody's given me that I'm sort of trying to, you know, remake so that it feels the way that I want it to. So I am really, really pleased about that. Um, I'm looking forward to the next couple of months to start harvesting some of those vegetables. Um, I mean, in fairness, I've had quite a few harvests of lettuce already because I started that really early, um, I think maybe in March. I'm just about to plant, I'm just about to sow some more because these ones will run to seed probably in a couple of weeks, particularly with how warm it's been. Um, but I am really enjoying it. Um, and it's been, yeah, a real pleasure to have a garden to my, you know, of my own to grow the little things that I want to grow in. So join me next time and I will let you know how I get on as the summer progresses. Take care.